Hello there and welcome to the new Tableau Dashboard tutorial and in this Tableau Dashboard tutorial I will show you this uh, Acme Superstore Retail Sales Dashboard which is a new design on the existing data set. So if you are new on my channel and have not seen previously published videos on this data set as well as several others like um, financial complaints, HR analytics and couple of others then make sure you check out the link below. But this dashboard is based on the retail sales dashboard where in the past I have produced uh, various other designs um, to show how you can create an innovative design or design that your users will love. So I believe this is also a very good design where on the background we have a light color over here. On top of that we have a title which is matching to the background color. On the right hand side we have a clearly visible filters and as you can see uh, uh, we have the ear where we want we are allowing the user to just select a particular year and the particular month. So no multiple selection just one selection. So there is a lot that is going on in this uh, in this dashboard as you can see because what you have is the KPI along with that you have the trend and you have the comparison with the previous month and then you have the analytical summary for uh, for for a given month that you are selecting for. and then down there you have this chart which is for the furniture sales uh, office supply and the technology so the product category that you have for those and uh, this is basically a trend and how each of the product category is basically being sold based on the month that you have selected also over here we are showing this uh, that when where is the highest sales in which particular what is the highest sale and in which particular customer segment so we will see i will show you step by step how you can create this but an important thing which is going on over here is the combination uh, of tableau with powerpoint because if you see these boxes over here for the kpi which gives you an impasse that they are slightly popping out because of this effect the shadow that it is having is because is, is basically giving us a good view and if as you can see it is basically consistent um, everywhere wherever I am showing the metric the analytical summary or anything that's where it is. So I will show you this step by step and down there like I said uh, if you are new and have, have not seen the previous videos then link is down there uh, for all the projects that I have published. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing is from the PowerPoint, how we can create these boxes, because once you know this, you will be able to just create whatever box that you need and then use it over here. So one problem uh, will be solved. So what I have over here is the, is this box over here. So this is basically, uh, as you can see, giving you the image of uh, of rounded edges with the rounded edges and slight shadow so what's basically going on over here is um, if i just delete that uh, what's going on over here is that uh, you can come to insert and in the insert you have the shapes and you can take this shape which is already a rounded edges shape so once you have this right uh, this is background uh, with the blue so in the shape format what you need to come is make it white right and uh, edges I want to keep it for now but over here we have couple of options like preset and all, all of these pieces and uh, if I remember I, this if I select let me just recollect because I created it like three days back so um, in the shadow i think this shadow is what i was experimenting it with and I, and then i changed it okay this is the one which i believe i take it in the bevel this is the option but you have full freedom as to whether you want this one even if this one if you want to show it that it's it's slightly inside the box or it over here it is completely popping out from all the different uh, angles so let me just choose this so that I'm being consistent with what I did. Okay. And then as you can see, there are some, uh, you know, formatting which is going on. So if I 
just first of all remove the no outline that's where it is and then uh, I think I need to right click and uh, format shape so in the format shape over here in this box effects you have the 3d format and I believe I took the angle as 80 nope so which angle I took so this is 80 and uh, lightning is this one so this is about as you can see experimenting it with it little bit so as you can see there are a lot of settings going on so what I will do is I will just keep it a little bit simple by having a shadow like this one that way we can make it how much in depth how what is the angle uh, how much angle we want contour and depth that we want so all of these settings are available here I have made some settings here which you can copy it but for now I think this should be uh, this is what I mainly wanted to show for the KPI and uh, if you see this is the one then you need to make slightly big in width over here which I have done for this one and then uh, this is another bigger one which I believe I created it but I deleted it uh, it's nothing but I if I increase the size this is what it will going to create but just make sure whatever your original design is so for example in my case I just dis designed this one changed the background shadow a little bit and all so if you think you are creating this one or any other shape from here right just use consistently over here so what do you need to do after once you have created the shape let's say this is the one if you are planning to use then you right click um, and then this is save as picture because generally if you try to save it what you will going to get is the um, is the uh, you need to save the entire powerpoint and then you cannot basically import the powerpoint so what you need is basically uh, right click on the shape and click on save as picture and you will be done so that way uh, you will have the save uh, you will have the shape and once i click on save as picture uh, it will show me where i need to show uh, save it and you can choose the location based on your computer uh, or where you are saving the project files and should be done okay so let's move on to our dashboard okay so now once you will have the image what you can do is basically in the dashboard right uh, in the dashboard you need to bring in as an image so how you do that let's say I, I create this new dashboard by clicking it over here so dashboard 3 is here in the dashboard tab this one what you need to make sure you do it floating and then you you add the image once you add the image it will ask you uh, choose the image so you click on choose image and wherever you have saved it so over here I have saved it here in my folder sales dashboard design so if I double click and click OK this is where my image is and once I have this I can bring in my sales KPI and put it over here so only thing is I need to adjust the size if you see if I remove this this is where my sales KPI is as I have done it over here so once you do that you have the first KPI created but this is about the design part what I will show you now is how you create this KPI because there is a lot going on not just the number but the percentage and uh, if you see even the uh, even the trend along with the average line chart so what I will do is come over here in sales KPI so the first thing is uh, keeping the design of the dashboard in the mind what it shows is for a particular year which we have selected like 2021 we are selecting a particular month and then showing it so what we need is the current month information and the previous month information that we can basically show it on the dashboard as well as have the comparison as well because uh, what have changed from previous month to this month like 21 percent increase in the sale is something impactful and useful parameter which your management would like to know to evaluate how the sales are going 
Okay, so for that, what I have done is I have created these current month uh, calculation and the previous month calculation. And before I create this, what I have done is I have created a parameter select month. So this one select month. So parameter creating a parameter is an important step here because with with the help of parameter you can have both the values the current month and the previous month though you can do the same thing with the filter but with the filter you can only show either current month or previous month not both so that's why uh, i am using it filter as a parameter or i'm using parameter as a filter so how you create a parameter is by coming over here and uh, click on create parameter once you click on here you get a screen like this one right where you need to use click on uh, mention the parameter name the name which you want your user to see when they are selecting the month and then the data type you have multiple data types like integer float string boolean date date and time so here in i'm choosing string because month value one indicate gen two indicate fab three indicate march also when i am looking at the previous month i can basically do a mathematical calculation um, to achieve the previous month information okay so once you have this setting done so you make sure that this is integer this is list and then the, these are the list value this is the value which is going in the back end of the tableau for calculation and this is the front end value which user can select right so once it is done you click ok and then you create a calculated field by coming over here and click on create calculated field once you create click on this you get a screen like this one so i'll show you the exact calculation for the sales so this is the field i have created current month sales so current month sales is nothing but if month of order date so order date is present already here this is coming as part of the data so if this is a month of order date that means if it is may it will basically have five over here equals to the select month so if you remember from the parameter may is associated with the number five so if month of order date is equals to the value five then sales and that's what we are getting it over here so if you see this current month sales is nothing but this one and then sales percentage change now the sales percentage change is a calculation let me show you again you will going to create it with the help of create calculated field and then you need to specify this calculation sales percentage change or monthly sale change or mom month over month value something like that all right so if you see this is current month sales minus previous month sales divided by previous month sales so whatever be the formula is so in this case we use this formula which is a standard formula to know how much change has happened from previous month to this month so we already know the current month sales but what we want to know is the previous month sales right and then do this calculation so if you see sum of current month sales minus sum of previous month sales will give you the value of actual change but to get the percentage you divide by the previous month sales which will help you get a percentage like this one 21 percent but now let's see how you will going to create the previous month sales so the previous month sales is over here so this is also a calculated field so you click on edit so what i'm doing over here is if month of order date is equals to the selected month which is five because what we have selected is may if you remember from parameter that i showed you earlier so five minus one is equals to four which will give you the april and that's what i was referring to arithmetic calculation when i was showing you the parameter so once you have this you will going to get the sales for the previous month and that will basically drive the change with the help of formula i just explained so this is all which is going on here and then once the values are present then i bring in the uh, sum of sales current month sales on text if you see this is the text you basically pick this and drag it over here on text similarly the sales percentage change you bring it over here on text once it is on the text you will see this t as the uh, as the icon just prior to this field value or the aggregated field value in the text 
make sure you are doing some formatting like for example this is tableau medium and size 18 and the color is full black so that it is impactful and monthly change is highlighted with whatever value that we want so for example i have highlighted it with this one which which is i believe is this close resemblance to this however you can choose the orange or maybe slightly grayed out or whatever value that you think is relevant in your scenario if you want to follow you can follow this and if i click on more color this is the color which has the rgb value of or the hexadecimal value color code is f e c c 6 6 so you can copy this and what you will going to get is the similar color like this one okay now what you can do is if you have followed this with me first create the first by creating the current month sales then the previous month sales and then the sales percentage change you will have the calculation like this now practice this by creating the profit kpi because again the same thing is going in the profit kpi and the discount kpi so discount kpi is also same only thing is it is using average okay so create these two kpis by following it what i have just explained very step by step and logical manner then what we have is the part of the kpi is the trend if you see the trend over here and before i show you another thing is just make sure that this is entire view right and alignment should be center horizontal alignment should be center because we want to make sure that it is coming properly on the cape on the dashboard now after that what we have is the trend so trend you can see is very very simple because we are going down to level of month so we are showing for each day how much sales is also we are showing if for a given day if no sales is there then we are showing that as well instead of uh, replicating the value or showing average or anything we are showing exactly what's going on into the business if no sales that's also create a concern as to what why the no sales has done or if this is sort of coming as a trend as well that in particular part of the month uh, continuously we see that no sale no sales is no sales are coming so for that again the default filters we have the year and the month and we what i have picked is basically the order date over here and you need to make sure that you are choosing the day so that uh, it is basically converting it into not year date but the day order date right and then you bring the current month sales over here on the rows and make sure the this is basically showing you right now it is automatic but if it is not line chart then make sure it is a line chart okay so once you have this what you can do afterwards is uh, having an average line so average line is present over here so this is the average line once you drag it over here like this one make sure you put it on the table and once you put it on the table what you get is a line like this however it will be a solid line in your case i have changed it to a dotted line so if you write if i right click and click on edit uh, in the formatting what you can do is uh, choose whatever thickness we, you want so for example this one i have chosen and the line type is the dotted line this one and i have cho i'm choosing uh com i think the opacity is something i am i'm reducing it because the color is chosen this one and the opacity is gone down to a, a lower level so if i right click not this one if i right click and uh, click on format over here uh, this is the line this is the color if you see the opacity it is just 29 percent so that it will not look like it is a it is a black line which is on top of the chart but it is basically part or behind the chart it's just to indicate where the average is okay and similarly in case of a line as well the color that i'm using is this one the uh, the lighter shade of gray so that way we have the trend and similarly is what going on in the profit trend and the discount trend as well but the only thing is here the formula is not sum of sales or sum of profit but the average of discount average of current month discount okay so that way we will have our first three kpis where they are 
there you go you have the first three kpi and if you see the the title over here is sales kpi which is a lighter version of the uh what i've done so i've just double click on that make sure it's it's over here your cursor is over here otherwise this will not come so this is a sheet name and if you see the sheet name size is nine it is a lower shade of the gray and it is tabby medium that way we just want to show the user what exactly the name of this kpi but the value is highlighted in more uh, you know more bold color as well as the lighter uh, shade of the trend to basically help them understand how the trend of this uh, sales really look like similarly the profit similarly the discount right so that way what's what's basically going on over here in the first three kpis so this will going to create your first three kpi now uh, this is where most interesting thing is going on which is basically your analytical summary so analytical summary if i go to this particular sheet there is actually a lot going on if you see so i expand this so what we have to create is basically um analytical summary for top region so top what is a top region what's its respective sales uh, what is the uh, preferred ship mode for uh, ordering the product over here and then finally average time to ship days okay so to to basically get this we have to create again multiple calculations so let's first look at the top region okay so the top region is present over here in this it is nothing but the lod calculation so first thing is let's go into the top region to see what how the top region is coming so don't worry a, a about this calculation i know this is this is big but what i have done is instead of creating three calculations i have just created one calculation so what's going on over here so let's break it up so this calculation over here if i just copy this and put it here so what's going on over here is that we want to know the sum of current month sales this is easy we have already done that we want to get the sum of current sales by region because at region the calculation is fixed so what it will give is the what is a sales for west what is these total sales for east west and all the regions now from all these regional sales we want to get the maximum sales so let's say for example in this case west has basically the maximum sales for this given month and year so what it will going to give is only the one single value for the west region is as the highest sales got it so that's what it is going on in the first calculation and then we are saying the same thing fixed region sum of sales sum of current month sales that means if this value this top value or this maximum value is equals to the regional value regional sum value of this one oops sorry regional sum value of this one then give us the region name then it should be the region that means the maximum value wherever it is matching over here for the regional sales value then give us the value so for example let me give you the output as well if it is becoming too complex so for example is equals to so output for this will be equals to 9429 9429 okay so this is your this part over here now let's see this part what it will going to give us copy this and i'm pasting this let's say uh, the output of this will be that you have east and you get let's say 1500 dollar 1500 as a and west what you are going to get is the dollar uh, 9429 which is equals to this one east west um, central let's say what you get is 4500 
dollar four five double zero and so on and so forth so this is the out this is the output that you will going to get it uh here uh when you will plot it but what we are doing we are saying this is where it is matching with this one so give us this particular region and that's how you are going basically uh you are getting the value output so just wanted to make sure that i further detail it um so that it is much clearer because calculation like this once you have a bit of an experience you will going to get it pretty easily but if you are new or having just uh, trying to understand the lod and some advanced calculation it may sound little difficult and the way easy way is that we create one calculation this another calculation this one and plot it on the front end and then see okay what exactly the output is coming but i've just shown you there so what it is giving finally as a condition output is the region if condition is going on and that's what we are getting after that we have the top sales top region sales so top region sales is also the same thing um where is that can i see this there top region sales there you go so use this search if you are not able to find it and again the same calculation is going on if you see this is the same calculation to identify the highest region which is west and then give it sales right after that what we are doing is identifying the shipping mode so top ship mode so here top ship mode this is also a calculated field again very similar calculation but what we are doing over here is the uh, we are identifying the ship mode and not the region so uh, it's the first of all finding the ship mode with the sales and then comparing with the highest sales and finding the ship mode. and then what we get is basically the standard class as a ship mode for us and then finally what is the average time to ship is basically over here so if you see average time to ship should be somewhere here shipping time in days so this is nothing but ship mode minus um order date sorry ship date minus order date so if we click at it so this is if month order date equals to select month then ship date minus if month order date equals to select month this month we are selecting then order date so ship date minus order date is going what going to give you is the uh is basically your uh is basically your shipping days so this is one calculation to identify the current month ship dates this is the second calculation to find the uh, current month order date once you subtract order date from ship date what you get is basically the number over here now what may happen is that when you are plotting this you can get the in some cases you can get the multiple values and if you see that's what i have done the exclusion so wherever the value is coming as null we need to exclude it over here right so make sure the exclude is enabled and wherever you see the null values are coming you just remove that and in the end what you will going to get is the one single output for your uh, for your discovery so that is something what you need to show over here in your dashboard so which gives uh, the user about what's basically going on in the current month where the current month is basically best with the high overall sale of 9429 uh, the preferred ship mode is standard class and uh, the product ship time is 5 days now because we have so many field if we go over there in the data source if i just come here you have segment you have you have customer name which customer has ordered most product in the current month what product has been ordered most what sub category has been ordered most all these things is something what we can do once we we know this commentary part pretty easily and you can actually create uh, not just the top commentary but product let's say if if you have the least sales or least profit or negative profit things like those you can even create commentary so you can create like four or five point which is automated enough to give your user a sense as to what's really going on on the higher and the and the lower side of the business so now you have the second point 
which you can plot it or you can show it over here. And then the third thing which is going on is basically this section where we have one sheet over here, another sheet over here and third sheet over here. The only thing is the sheets are transparent. So this looks like one block with its own small KPIs. So it's a pretty nice sheet. Uh, simple uh, what, what's really going on, nothing much complex other than this one. Um, so first thing is showing you the sheet. So once you click it over here, you go to sheet and and very easily you can see that we are showing the order date. What is the order date? Uh, whether what is order on day one? So it looks like furniture is being given, uh, has got a lot of sales in day one um, and so on and so forth for the rest of the days as to what categories is being sold highest. Um, then the sum, sum of current month sales, which we have created it earlier over here. And then category is on the color. For the color, I have chosen different color, as you can see, which is matching, slightly matching with the background and all that we are showing. So if I show you this, double click over here. This is the color code for furniture, CC66FF. And for office supplies, I have shown you already, FECC66. And for technology, the color code is 6666FF. You can either use this or you can create completely on your own. It's up to you, but I have chosen this one. So once you have this, the, the sales trend, what you do is plot it over here, adjust it width and height and so that it is coming over here easily. After that, what you have is the another sheet, this one, which is again a floating, as you can see completely, I'm using the floating layout. So go to sheet. It's also pretty, it's not actually easy. Um, I'll show you, I'll, I'll explain you in a minute, but what it basically shows is the uh, three different calculation uh, that, that we are doing it over here. So these three different calculation is going on here. Average furniture sales, average office sales, average technology sales. Why? Because these three values are part of one dimension that is present there and I just wanted to have a different color code which is matching with this um, where you go in the dashboard which is matching with these color codes so I wanted to basically have this uh, as a different color code so for this what I did is I basically created three dummy calculations so that I will going to get three different card one for each calculation so average of zero is one dummy calculation where I have put the furniture Average of 0, 0.0 where I have put the office supplies and then the third is where I have put the technology and then I can easily go in and color code my values. So for furniture this one, for office supplies I can choose this one I believe and uh, third one is basically your uh, technology sales and this one basically your color code. So that's a, that's what it is basically going on. Three dummy calculation. Each for each dummy calculation, we are bringing the F, the three different calculated fields that we created. And if I show you the calculated field, it's basically the simple if condition. If category is furniture, then give me the current month sales. That's it. So that's what it is going on over here, as you can see. And you have the color code. Once you have this, make sure that this is entire view. And uh, these are all um, centrally aligned, as you can see it over here. Uh, the only an another thing which I'm doing is apart from calculation is I am adding a small text, as you can see. And actually, I want to make it bold. Okay. Even for this one, I want to make it slight bold so that it is clearly shown over there. Like, okay. I don't know whether it did it, the first one. Oh yeah, it did it. Just does not look like it really does. Uh, did over there. So, and average technology sales. Oh, okay. So this was average one. The last one I was actually checking it over here. But this is, this is the first one. So if I select this, bold this. Now this one will be changed. It is bold now. Okay. So now we have the dashboard and you can see clearly it will show you the values over here along with the numerical values. 
the formatting is also going on so for formatting what you can do is for each of these uh, fields you select this value and click on go on format in the numbers you can choose currency and no decimal values that's what it is so once you have this the one final section which is over here is the uh, is the highest sales in in a given segment so if i go over here so that's basically your uh, current sales value and what segment it is so we have bring in the segment value on the detail that what that's what we are showing it over here so right now it's basically the uh, current month value is something what we are showing this this is not not exactly the highest sales that's that's not what it is the highest sales over here but it's basically the um, total sales uh, in the in a given segment so that's something uh, we can actually change just to bring in the highest sales and i believe the um, if if we want to find it by consumer segment what we need is basically first of all the segment information so segment information will come again from the value like top region so we can duplicate this right and we can say top segment so this is something altogether new calculation i am creating segment and i will just duplicate this so instead of recreating it i am duplicating it duplicate and uh, edit and i am changing this to top segment and what we are seeing is top segment current month sales over here changing this to segment and again changing this to segment will give me the top segment and top segment is here i will just bring it over here i have null and consumer so what i'll do is i'll just make sure that i will exclude this and i remove this okay so this will give me the consumer segment and i believe it was picking up the right one for some reasons but that's okay and higher sales in consumer segment and then so we have the top segment what we need is basically uh the top sales over here so it's again the uh, top sales is basically top region sales i will duplicate it with the top segment sale um duplicate edit sum of current month sales by segment so that's that's what it is basically what field what dimension we want to use accordingly we just keep on making the changes and then we have the current month sales and click okay uh we need to make sure that i'm changing the name as well so top region sales change this to top segment sales click okay so we have this top segment sales now if i go back to this and come over here bring it this instead of current month sales we will say top segment sales so top segment sales is something which is coming out over here to one oh okay i have put it on the uh text but we don't want to show the text so um i will just either delete it fly okay and then we have the top segment so what we will have the top segment over here okay so if we do go here we have this missing field which is this we insert sum of top segment sales make it black apply and top segment is here so we remove this segment which was the field earlier and bring the top segment apply okay now it is fine so this is what it should show us so now uh, your dashboard is completed with the uh, help of all these different things which is going on the only thing you need to make sure that whenever 
you are bringing this and creating a new dashboard like I've done this one. I've shown you the, uh, the floating is what you need to choose so that you are not really messing around or Tableau is not giving you the problem when you are trying to uh, basically fix the sheets. Okay, so you basically uh, have this, um, uh, then the KPI. Only thing is, it's about arranging this. So I will keep this to you, keep this uh, part to you to arrange it like this and format it like this, what I've done it. And then in the background over here, if you see, uh, for the highest level of the layer, the uh, the highest level of the container, the layout container, I have chosen this color, I believe um, this one over here. E this is part of a default color, so no worries, you can you can easily get it. So that way you can uh, create your visualization or your dashboard finally with the help of the various different uh, sheets that we have created. To show uh, the KPI, the change, the trend in one section, the analytical summary in another section, I highly encourage that along with the top region, what you find is the uh, lowest region or the the least the region where you have the least sales. And uh, over here, uh, you know, these this bar chart and everything is giving us uh, further trend by customer seg the product segment or the product category and even by the customer segment so that's about it what i wanted to show you very step by step manner as to how you can create a dashboard like this with the help of powerpoint to create boxes like this one and uh, analytical summary and uh, all these different components how we can bring it together and some lod calculations some calculated field parameters so it looks like it to me at least uh, for a beginner to intermediate level, this is this is a good dashboard or a good uh, number of techniques that one should know to really create uh, a meaningful as well as impactful dashboard which your user needs and your user demands as to how, how they can really see this. And at the end of the day, basically it's engaging them or it's it's good enough uh, for them to to drive the decision or to do the analysis. Well, let me know if you have any questions and uh, I will try to answer that. If you have any dashboard which you want me to recreate, drop me uh, based on the email I'm showing it from in front of here. Also in the description, uh, all the other dashboards that I previously made is present and uh, some social media links where you can follow me. Um, it's good to connect with, uh, with you and learn from you as well as to what what you are doing and uh, hopefully uh, uh, that will be beneficial for both of us so that's about it and i'll meet you in the next video with a new topic